United States. And to add to that announcement, my nominee as the new Secretary of Labor, Bill Brock. He was our top choice from a blue, blue ribbon list of candidates, I have to say. He has an outstanding government background, six years as a United States Senator from Tennessee, four years now at cabinet level, and, and he was no stranger to politics. He was chairman of the GOP, helped rebuild the Republican Party from 1976 to 1980, and I think laid the groundwork for what was one of the great Republican Party victories of quite some number of decades. And he's been a trade negotiator, and anyone who's spent four years dealing with international trade can negotiate with almost anyone. Among his primary interests is rebuilding and maintaining the ties with labor, organized and unorganized, attacking the serious endemic problem of youth unemployment, in particular minority youth. And I know he looks forward to working with our job partnership plan, has been working uh, fairly successfully now for some time in finding work particularly for the untrained, training them and then placing them. And so I'm very pleased and proud to announce that Bill has agreed to accept the nomination for this cabinet post. And having said that, I'm going to... We understand he didn't want the job. What? We understand he didn't want the job. Well, you know, you just can't believe everything you read, can you? <laughs> well, this clears the way for you to move the trade representative right into commerce, doesn't it, Mr. President? What? This clears the way for you to move the trade representative's job right into commerce, right? Well, that seems like a long way around, doesn't it? It sure does. Thank I'm you. not going to take any more questions. You're going to have at me tomorrow you night. Your reaction what? to the MX vote, uh, uh, House appropriation? No, I'm not going to change the subject tonight? here. I'm going to... I'm going to leave you in the hands of the nominee for Secretary of Labor, William Brock. Did you make the decision this morning? Thank you, Mr. President, very much. We've been talking about it for several days, and uh, do, you, do you think he will at least be able to? Do you think he will at least be able to meet and talk with Lane Kirkland, since your former Labor Secretary never did? I'm going to let you answer. That. I'd be happy to answer that if I may. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe I could begin, Andrea, by addressing that I've already talked to Lane. He's an old friend, a man I have a great respect for, and a man I, I think I can work very comfortably with. Well, don't you think you have a lot of fence mending to do, given what's been going on in the Labor Department? Well, we've had uh, some very difficult times, and we have a lot of communicating to do, but that's precisely what I would like to do. What about these stories that you didn't want this job, Mr. Brock? Um, as the President said, you have to be careful with what you hear. I uh, liked being the United States Trade Representative. I valued that opportunity. I enjoyed it very much, and I was uh, comfortable with what we were trying to achieve. This is a very new challenge, and one that I'm very excited about, and I, uh, I welcome it. Did you initially turn it down, though, sir? I didn't uh, have the opportunity to initially turn it down. Pardon? I understand you said through a spokesman yesterday that you were not interested in this job. Have you changed your mind in the last 24 hours? I am intensely interested in this job. What, what, changed, what changed your mind on that? Uh, the president is, uh, is, is, is not only persuasive, but uh, he's a man that, uh, that I have great affection for. And when he says that he would like this job done in a certain way, and I feel that I can do it that way, uh, it's a it's a challenge that is impossible to resist. Well, you said you didn't have the opportunity, Mr. Brock. Brock. I'm sorry, Bill. The special trade representative can now be folded right. into a Department of Commerce and Trade. Uh, I wouldn't uh, make that uh, presumption. Still against it. Huh? Well, I think there are certain problems associated with that proposal, sir. Mr. Brock, who's going to take the place at the special trade representative's office? I'm sorry. Who is going to succeed you at the SDR? Well, I have no idea. I don't think those conversations have even, be even begun. The, uh, the President uh, talked to me this morning, and we really have been talking almost exclusively about labor since then. Mr. Brock, Mr. Brock, you, Mr. Brock did you talk to Lane Kirkland. Kirkland. What did he say about, uh, did he know that you were being chosen, and what did he say about it? I'm not sure that I ought not to ask you to ask Lane that question, but uh, well, like uh, he indicated uh, uh, some pleasure and uh, uh, an appreciation of the fact that we've known each other 
are comfortable with each other and clearly can work together. Mr. Sir, Brock, did you what did you hope to achieve by becoming Labor Secretary in terms of the administration's relationship with organized labor? Well, I, I think, let me just question the premise a little bit. Uh, it is not just organized labor. I think my primary job is to do whatever I can to create as many jobs as I can. That's the fundamental goal of, of this administration overall. It certainly is the focused goal of the Department of Labor. In that sense, um, I'd like to uh, express primary concern about the uh, some of the problems that are so obvious, the, the, the number of, of young people, and particularly uh, black young people that don't have adequate job opportunities in this country. I don't know enough about uh, what has been done in the department to, to comment on specifics, except to say that that is a major concern of my own uh, and one that I hope that uh, I can effectively address. Secondly, in the trade area, uh, one of the biggest concerns I've had is the, uh, the fact that as, as this economy changes as fast as it is and as fast as it will in the next 10 or 15 years, we're going to have a lot of problems with keeping our skill development programs up to date so that people have the flexibility to move into better jobs, higher skilled jobs. And if we can contribute in that area, I think it would be uh, very, very important also. Government funded programs, government funded programs to move those skills over. Bill, you're asking uh, questions that I don't know how to answer yet. I don't even know what the budget of the department is. I have a lot to learn. But, First time uh, to be leaving trade with the summit coming up, the problems with Japan. Aren't you leaving uh, a vacancy in a really important position? Yeah, but I, I have uh, the best team in Washington at the U.S. Trade Office and they're eminently capable of carrying on those those programs. Would you tell us how the president persuaded you to uh, take this job? Uh, just cool it just a little bit. Nate Hoffman's been waiting for about a dozen questions. Here. Here to you. I've been waiting, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brock, do you intend to continue the uh, relaxation of uh, rules and regulations on uh, in the occupational safety area as your predecessor did? And uh, do you think that's gone far enough? You're asking an area that is outside of my experience of the last four years, and I rather would rather wait and see. Uh, there is a real value to the safety standards that we have established, and to the extent that we can make them effective and workable and efficient, cost efficient as well as human efficient, uh, I'll try to do that. Could you tell us now, sir? I'm sorry. Could you tell us how the president persuaded you to take this job? Tell us how you came. How you came to take it? He asked. When did he ask? <laughs> well, uh, I guess the, uh, the, 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 the conversation was uh, uh, sometime early morning. Uh, yeah. I had uh, discussed the possibility with uh, Don Regan uh, for the last day and a half and frankly had, uh, had decided that uh, I needed some time to, to think about whether I could contribute anything to this uh, responsibility that might be uh, unique. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I was uh, working where I think best. I was working in my yard uh, this morning. And, uh, yes. Mr. Buck, do you plan to take an active part in difficult labor management disputes where workers have been on strike for a long time, like particularly in the airline industry? No. I think Let's it is important that the Sheila. government stay Let's out of uh, negotiations and let the collective bargaining process work. Let's take Sheila for the last Mr. question. Mr. Brock, you just, uh, you just said that your priority is creating as, having as many jobs here as possible. Isn't that going to put you in conflict with some of the positions you've taken against protectionism? <laughs> I don't think in the least. Uh, this country cannot, as an economy, create the maximum number of jobs, create the maximum, uh, achieve the maximum level of growth, deal with inflation, which was the cancer that was costing us jobs, uh, if we have to have protectionism. That, that's, that's a contradiction in terms. Protectionism will ultimately destroy jobs in this country, and it is the wrong way to go. Mr. Brock, what do you see Thank as you your go. role in terms of building ties between the Republicans and blue collar, and in, in, in the political role? Chris, I guess it is primarily to, to listen, uh, to 
to communicate what we're trying to do, to, to listen and learn. Uh, there are a lot of good ideas in labor uh, on things that we might be able to do better and to try to uh, give them a, a welcome opportunity to participate, to, uh, to have a place where they, they can have uh, a voice. But do you acknowledge that part of your role is to try to solidify uh, the labor's support for the Republicans? Well, to the extent that the President does a good job and we achieve the goals that he set for this country, I think the President's base and, in turn, the party's base will be secure. Did you sound out Kirkland before you got the uh, nomination? I mean, at what point did you call him? I called him after I had been asked. Yeah. Yeah. After you, you were asked, but after before you accepted? accepted? Uh, no, I had accepted uh, immediately preceding that. Did you talk with any other labor morning. leaders? No, I have not. I have not had time. This has been a fast morning. Thank you all very much. What you intend to call? Let me cover what TikTok you you may be interested in, uh, and that will uh, conclude it. I don't think there'll be any more TikTok discussions. Uh, the uh, Don Regan has had some discussions over the weekend with a number of individuals, and an opportunity to look at a, a list of recommendations. This uh, list was presented. Uh, He's talked to several that were on that list throughout the weekend, including the nominee, and the um, uh, list was presented to the president uh, in Don Regan's meeting with him this morning, which the vice president, Mike Deaver, were present. The president made a decision in that meeting, picked up the phone, called Bill Brock, who was in his garden, and uh, Bill Brock uh, accepted, and uh, the president wished to announce it uh, promptly and did so. Well, then it's Regan's choice first. Regan no, no. couldn't, did he come at the top of the list? I don't know that the list was ranked. Uh, Can you tell us that? Pardon? How many names were on the list? No. no, we just won't go into those type of internal discussions. Union Garden. Pardon? Union Garden. Any <laughs> overall, I mean, any basic change in the thrust of the administration's labor policies, does this... Or, or can you say that this is a continuation of all 